Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. Wednesday now, the 11th of June, 2025. No webcam today because it's glitching out on me. It's an old computer, probably eight years old. Maybe it's time for an upgrade. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. We're going to talk about the Eastern Pacific and how active it has been and how active it looks like it's going to be for the next several days and some implications of that that I'll be interested to see if they pan out some uh, speculation I'm going to throw at you. And then we'll take a look at how things are going in the Atlantic Basin. Uh, hint, hint, it's pretty darn quiet right now. Let's start off with this post over here on the old Twitter. Hurricane Center Pacific, NHC Pacific, putting out that uh, Barbara has dissipated. Cosme is close to doing the same. And the Pacific south of Mexico expected to remain very active with two additional systems. If we expand this graphic here, you can see these. Two additional systems forecast to eventually develop, or certainly try to. But again, this area has been very, very busy recently with Alvin and Barbara and now Cosme and a couple others trying to develop. And as I'm going to show you in a moment, there's only so much available heat content over here. And maybe it gets stirred up and there will be plenty of action for the Atlantic later on. We'll get to that. All right, so moving over to the satellite animation using the infrared, the colorized infrared, because it's kind of early. I'm over in Lubbock, Texas. I'll explain that, too, in just a moment. But um, the sun hasn't come up enough for me to show a more visible type satellite picture. But anyway, uh, you can tell, pretty active here with limited showers and thunderstorms in the southeastern Pacific. Our two ex-cyclones over here, Barbara and Cosme, like, where are they? You can hardly even find them. In the Atlantic Basin, nice and quiet. You can see pretty strong upper-level winds cutting through the Caribbean right there. Telltale sign for you, for sure. Uh, and otherwise, pretty strong Bermuda High sitting over here, pumping the southerly flow through the Caribbean, in the Gulf, and then into the lower 48, where it has been darn wet over here in Texas and even in New Mexico. I was out doing some hail hunting yesterday, and ran across an oil field worker just out in the middle of nowhere. He was telling me to be careful of the rattlesnakes. And uh, he was mentioning once he found out what I was doing, uh, you know, chasing storms, that it's been pretty wet. And he was ready for it to end because uh, it's been a pretty wet spring so far. But I guess that's good. You'd pr probably rather be wet than dry, I guess. But the tropics looking pretty darn good as we continue on past the first third of June. June 11th marks the beginning of the second third of June. Hey, I know math. All right. So in the uh, ECMWF department, I'm going to start showing this more. Uh, I've, I've been a GFS guy for a long time, just mainly because if you, you get the layers and uh, on tidbits here, it's just a lot easier. Uh, but I'm going to use the ECMWF more, and then we'll compare and contrast the two. It's just a little change I'm doing, no big deal, but I just wanted you to be aware of it. Usually that says GFS right there. Today, ECMWF. So here's the Euro, that's what we all call it, at that 5,000 foot level. And uh, again, that's the 850 millibar level. And I like to see that right there, that vorticity. That's what we're looking for. Here's a bunch of it over here spread out over a large area. So let's see if anything bundles up off the coast of Mexico over the coming days. It tries to, and I also like the Euro here because we get the uh, frames are every three hours instead of every six hours, I think, is what the GFS is. So you get more frames, and so your animation just looks smoother. So anyway, we do have another system that looks like it's going to develop well to the south of the Mexican coastline. But again, all of that traffic coming through here is going to stir up and has been stirring up the water little by little. We haven't had any intense hurricanes or anything like that, but every one of these takes a little bit more heat content out, and we'll look at that closer at a uh, sea surface temperature map in just a moment, and I'll throw some speculation your way. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic, boy, there it is, the Bermuda High, also known as the Bermuda Azores High because it does extend out across the Atlantic, I don't know why I'm drawing my own height lines on here, but I am <laughs> mainly to show you the expansive nature of this. This really does expand out like a big balloon, and it is. It's just a huge area of air out there, 
and uh, it's expanding and it's done so pretty far to the west and that's going to keep any development that might come off South America with some of those vorticity maximas that come racing off the mountains of South America just nothing's going to get going in the Atlantic uh, with this kind of a pattern in place. The trades are pretty brisk through here still have the dry stable air as a result of the uh, Saharan air layer being pretty prominent uh, but watch this as I move this out through time the uh, Bermuda High actually expands and I mean look at that that ridging all the way over to the west here yeah you're not going to get anything popping up in the Caribbean or elsewhere with this kind of a pattern in place and this is very typical for June that is why we usually do not have June hurricanes. I mean, there's a reason for climatology. But look what happens. The high sort of fractures, probably going to have a pretty hot time of it as we approach the latter two-thirds of June. There's that math again uh, over the southeast. So, you know, be ready for that. It's going to be hot and steamy and uh, no major systems coming through here. So water temperatures are going to continue to go up. They're going to be undisturbed as we continue to move through this first month of the hurricane season. Taking a look at the uh, African continent and any tropical systems that might be trying to work their way. A few impulses here, some tropical waves lined up, a few out over the Atlantic, but the Saharan air layer, even in this infrared shot, look at all that stable air right in there. Of course, this is hotter than you know what and uh, dusty and dry as well. And that does get advected out into the Atlantic often this time of year. And that's helping to squelch any kind of development as well anytime soon. So here's one thing that I'm really curious about. I'll draw your attention over here to the Eastern Pacific. Let's just kind of play around and draw some stuff in here. There we go. That's the limited theater, if you will, of where these systems are developing. We had Alvin and Barbara and Cosme all in this area. And that's pretty much the only significant upper ocean heat content that we have. That is remarkable. It really is. Maybe. You know, I don't know the future, but I look at that. Been doing this long enough. I think that's just not a lot of area. Now, these are the anomalies, of course. But elsewhere, that's the equator. You're not going to get development down there. And if anything does work its way you know, out towards this area, boom, it's gone. Because these anomalies here, you're talking one to two degrees Celsius colder way off the coast of the Baja. That is really interesting, especially when you contrast that to the very warm Gulf up here, uh, solidly one, one and a half Celsius warmer than average. The also very warm Caribbean, you know where I'm going with this, and the pretty warm main development region, you know? So, Dr. Klotzbach has uh, an update to the hurricane season coming out today, and I don't see why he would change his numbers. When you look at this pattern, no El Nino here, generally a warm Atlantic. Yes, there could be some instability issues, but we've seen that since pretty much, what, 2012 on? Not a lot of main development region activity, except for 2017, really, and we're most concerned about areas over here anyway. So if tropical waves aren't developing out here, I don't really care about that. You know, I mean, I'm interested in what is going to impact land. And anything that comes across that doesn't develop here could develop farther to the west, and we could have some big problems. We know this. And I think this pattern would be set up for something like that. So I think we'll still have quite the busy season, but I think it's going to be backloaded again most of it in September and October. Something seems to be changing with that, but it's still a pretty short time frame. We're only talking about, I don't know, maybe 10 years or something. A lot more time needs to go by before we can definitively say there's a pattern change. But a lot of activity in October these recent year, years, to be sure. All right, actual water temperatures here. I thought I'd show you this. The old gulf there really warming up now. 29 and 30 degrees Celsius with no tropical systems at all coming through here to disturb it. It's just going to continue to warm and uh, add more heat content and moisture to the lower levels of the atmosphere for the lower 48. Uh, very hot and steamy as we head uh, through the next several weeks and months probably, right? Meanwhile, off the coast of the Carolinas and elsewhere, 
Uh, 25 Celsius, that's this yellow area. Finally, getting close to that magic 80 degree mark, that's 26 Celsius. We're getting there. Um, I am back over in Texas, like I said, but when I get home this weekend, look forward to maybe going out to the beach on uh, Sunday with the kids, and at least the water temperatures will be fairly warm. I like them in the low 80s myself. That's just me. All right, as I said, I've been out here a few times this year trying to go after the hail. Been talking about that more and more, and uh, Fox Weather has done the same. There's this huge research project going on called Ice Chip, a concerted effort from dozens of scientists all over the world. Yesterday I struck out, didn't get even a pea-sized piece of hail. It just wasn't a big hail day. But look, this 360 stuff, I'm telling you, absolutely remarkable. This is the 360 cam on top of the Tacoma, and uh, this is the roof panel that uh, the folks at IBHS gave me, and uh, it's secured up here. When we get a big hail core coming, I have fixed a GoPro or two here because it clamps onto that thing with a C-clamp, and then I can look at the roof panel in 4K, recording the hail strikes and documenting the concentration on the ground. There's a whole process to it. But yesterday I didn't get that chance, but what I did get was this amazing look at the shelf cloud and the approaching squall line, if you will, of this cluster, this linear cluster of storms that moved across southeast New Mexico. And, I mean, this 360 video is, there's just, it's amazing. It really, really is. Uh, and you can see all kinds of detail. There's the hail guard. There's some of my cases that uh, I bring with some extra equipment. Uh, and you can look out beyond where the shelf cloud is. You can see the uh, pump jacks over there. Just amazing stuff. Now, by the way, this is the signature of seeing some hail, that greenish color, that kind of blue-green. But it was melting before it hit the ground, and it was transient. My friend Taylor Trogdon, uh, a scientist in Colorado, was saying about yesterday, it's going to be transient, you're going to need to be on it, and it was just too hard. There's not a good road network out that way either. But uh, I wanted you to see this. I'll uh, make it public. Later today, I'll get one of our back-end team members to make me a thumbnail for it. And if you've got a VR headset, oh, yeah, you're going to want to watch it in a VR. I mean, my goodness, what an amazing world that we live in. And this is very much real. We're going to have to start saying that more and more with this ridiculous AI stuff. So far, the AI seems to be really good at making Yeti and Star Wars videos and not much else, but... I'm joking, but that just seems to dominate my uh, some of my algorithms lately. But anyway, speaking of severe weather, I'm off today, and it'll be a travel day up to Colorado from Lubbock, where I am now. Slight risk down here in southeast Texas. Tornado threat, 2%. That's not zero, so pay attention, right? Want to keep you around, got to keep you alive. And uh, the wind and hail threat also... Not nothing, but not too substantial either. Tomorrow, a much less overall threat. I bet we'll see a little slight risk introduced into some of these darker green areas that we see today. But generally speaking, uh, kind of a calmer period until we get to Friday. And then Friday, it's going to be game on again for me. And uh, hopefully somebody will go with me. I'm looking to see if maybe Taylor can uh, ride with me or uh, we'll find somebody. Solo's fun and nice, you know, from time to time, but it's more fun when you have a, a colleague with you. But look at this, Kansas, the panhandle of Oklahoma. Now, I'm not going up here. I'm going to be in Denver uh, today, tomorrow, so I'm going to focus on that area. You could get some good hailstorms out of that. I say good in terms of science research stuff, right? That's what I mean. You know it. Uh, and that's that's a good setup for that, so we'll be watching that for Friday. I'll talk about it more tomorrow. Before I let you go, this is important. I didn't know Gary England personally, but I know exactly what Colton Williams, who is Colton Williams, you may ask. This tweet just jumped out at me. So Colton works over there at Cake, Cake News, and uh, went to University of Oklahoma, of course. And he knows all about Gary. Gary was in the movie Twister, briefly on the TV there, warning of a tornado, and he's a pioneer. And look, 
I'll, I'll throw a positive on it. Yes, he passed away, but he gave us 85 years. You know, even as a young kid, I bet he was very bright and very inspiring. And it's tough to lose somebody, but boy, look at the legacy he left behind. And think about all of the people that are meteorologists now because of Gary England. You know, we'll certainly miss him. Like I said, I didn't know him personally. I didn't live in the Midwest. But I'm very aware of the positives that he has left to our community as a whole and the lives, undoubtedly, that he has saved over the years. So he'll certainly be missed. But boy, his, leg his legacy and his... Uh, Legendary inspiration to all of us will, will live on. All right. So trying to end on a positive note, even when we do lose somebody that was very important to us. All right. That's it from me for today. I'll get that webcam working. It's probably just something tweaked in the laptop's lid because that's where the webcam is. Because I like to talk to you, not just at you. You know about that. Anyway, I'll let you go. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Settle from all of us at Hurricane Track. I'll talk to you again sometime tomorrow.